Hi, this is Lexus Bill, host of Drive Time on Joy 99.7 FM. Listen, you don't have to worry if you miss Drive Time or personality profile. It's going to be live on our podcast page. Just log on to www.myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. You can listen to Drive Time, personality profile, and any other of your favorite shows on Joy FM on that page. You don't have to miss a show at all. Joy 99.7 FM Radio for discerning listeners. Um, the other thing we're going to be talking about this morning has to do with the uh, Kratz of Folk. There's a feature uh, by George Addo Jr. Mm -hmm. So he had this conversation with Dr. Nyao Nyao Tamaklo, who looks at Accra of Folk's chances in Africa. You know that um, Accra of Folk, by virtue of the fact that they won the. Here pandemic. we go. Mm -hmm. They're making their way to Africa. Okay. Let me just get you. I'm rolling my eyes. Yeah, but just get used to it. Okay. So right. we're talking about the chances, their chances in Africa, the new players signed and the club's future as a whole. So here's this feature uh, brought to you by George or put together by George Ado Jr. Uh, thank you very much, Doc, for your time. And I must say that everything you promised, you delivered. Because I remember when I spoke to you after Accra Hartsburg won the league title, you did indicate that Hartsburg were going to win the FA Cup. And indeed, you won the FA Cup. I mean, how would you put the season together? Now you had the double. And in fact, we have done the analysis to understand that it's even a treble because there is nothing like a champion of champions. So you've managed to do another treble. Uh, how do you see the season? How do you see the season? Well, as I said earlier, the, on, uh, it's been a very hard work. Um, we started the league with a whole lot of problems. But, um, you know, we were quite uh, sure that if we work harder, definitely we shall achieve something. Uh, we, as a, as, a, as a board, we got our loins on the wheel and then decided let's push teams. So um, there were a few things we did because uh, during the, uh, no, at the beginning of the whole program, um, our technical team totally collapsed. And um, that was a disaster. And if we have not had the experience in handling such issues, uh, the club would have been in a very bad situation. Um, so we quickly got ourselves together. This sure we got a new manager, we got a new coach, and then uh, other technical assistants like footballer, a foot, uh, what a goalkeeper trainer. We got another one, and a host of other positions for the technical side. And then we uh, made sure the boys, you know, didn't lose courage at all, which surprises they were strongly behind us. And then, uh, you know, we started forging our head. And uh, as the game went on, you know, we started winning our matches to our surprise. And uh, but I realized the boys are working very hard. At times they train twice in a week, eh, twice in a day. And then um, I must say, um, there are a few uh, stop guard coaches who have helped us a lot. Uh, one, is a stop back coach for the Aras, uh, whose name always whose name always escapes me. And then uh, we have the new, I think, from also who did very well too. And they, during his time, we were able to win out two matches until uh, our new chap, uh, Samuel Buido, came in. So it, it's been a strong struggle. But well, we have been so steadfast and very persistent. And I'm not surprised that we are where, where we are today. Find out, um, how did you guys plan this one with some of uh, wedding and how it all, you know, happened at the same time? You won the double, you won this one, and there was a wedding and there was a party. Uh, did you plan it? Did he discuss with you? I mean, how, how did it happen like that? <laughs> no, it wasn't plan at all. I think the Bwedu's wedding was the icing of the cake, you know. And, uh, uh, it's so interesting. The whole um, the team went there to Kumasi, and uh, I learned it was shown live on television. Yeah, some of the TV stations. And yes. 
Yeah. Uh, you see, when you are working with somebody with a good spirit, you see it. I have been in football for years, so I can easily determine. But there is somebody, you can see, is a man with a good spirit. And he has a love for the club. Uh, when I personally spoke with him before we took him, I noticed that, you know, there were quite a number of people who wanted that position. But I personally, before even he was formally invited, I had a chat with him. And I knew there's the right person to, to handle our boys for it. So I'm not surprised. He had a big support from the club. Yeah, yeah, and indeed, yeah. indeed, we had a, a dinner to welcome the new intake mm. uh, just last Sunday. And Bwedo came there with his beautiful wife as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we are looking forward to the phobia baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we'll call it. <laughs> we we'll call it the phobia baby, of course. Um, Doc, so the baby will have a, a, a huge outdoor in there. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Right. So, Doc, yeah. let's talk about let's talk about things that are ongoing in the background, the preparations and everything. You spoke about uh, the players that you have just put out there. Some great signings in there. Suraj is a great player. York, uh, you know, Koji is back. Uh, and a waku, and it's already filled a lot of excitement in that. Uh, what has been the process going and getting these players? You see, Suraj, when I hear the name, reminds me some years back when I was traveling for Crowds of Hope. We had a gentleman by name Suraj from, from uh, I think, Techiman. And he was one of our best strikers. You, you won't believe he's still with me. He's always in contact with me from Tichiman. And he has a son now who is playing our, our as, as a team, another brilliant footballer. I'm here to find out whether this particular slash has any relation with him. Uh, Awaku is another seasoned footballer. He's had an experience with this uh, um, cup competitions before. So I think it's a, a very good catch. And uh, uh, I like his demeanor and the way he speaks. Uh, when we had a meeting last time, we had the dinner, he spoke briefly. He's a calm chap, that sort of person I like, who has a lot of leadership qualities. And um, I, uh, the others, uh, Subontin is another good footballer. Then we have uh, this giant of a, uh, a midfielder, the defensive midfielder, whose name I can't remember now, very tall child. And, uh, and I think... Um, you have the summer text the, boy, the, 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 the Ben Young. A very young, young chap. Yeah. <clears throat> very young chap as well. And these are all boys who you can see they, 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 they are eager to, 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 to better their 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 football and uh, get to the world stage. So that's what we are waiting for. Uh, as they were told by the chairman of the board, we shall give them the platform and it's for them to demonstrate to the world that they are of good quality. Doc, you told me the last time that you guys were going to ensure that every good player is going to stay with Accra Hearts of Oak and you are going to ensure that the prizes and their, their tax go up to the limit before you try to sell them. There, there have been a few noises around. We're hearing some rumors, obviously. We're hearing some stories that some clubs are interested in one or two of the players, uh, you know, like Salifu and Co. Are, are you going to be tempted in any way? No. I say it emphatically, no. Yes, there will be people who would like to come out with all sort of false information. But as I talk to you now, there's nothing like that going on. We are not negotiating with anybody for any particular player. Excellent, Doc. That's good. So we look forward to it. Are there any special preparations, you know, going into the CAF uh, Champions League? But even before we talk about that, um, I don't know if you have realized, uh, I don't know how that's affecting the club, in terms of the numbers at the stadium all around the world, uh, people have opened up to COVID. The tests are being done. They're showing their, you know, um, their negative tests going into the stadium and watching. And the football economy, economy elsewhere is beginning to get back on its feet. Hasselbuck with all the vibe 
a lot more supporters want to you know be involved in this how has management looked at this situation and uh, what are you hoping to do about it the numbers are the stadium is a bit concerned to us you know um uh, at times i get a bit surprised i think by now the ministry of uh, youth and sports should have done something about it it was all over the world now particularly in the big football world you know People attend, you know, matches in their full capacity now. And I don't see why that can't happen yet. The COVID protocols can be observed. And uh, if that is done, I think we should be allowed to have a full stadium now, if we want the following. Uh, I think uh, uh, our match with uh, this Guinean side in about uh, four weeks from now, if I would say so, no, less than that. But our first match with them will be on the 10th or so. And then week after that, we are playing at right here. We shall do our best to see if government will allow, you know, full capacity attendance. And if that comes on, that would be of great help to us because uh, we are losing a lot of money. And, uh, you know, football is money now. We have spent a whole lot of money, you have no idea. And, um, uh, I think it's time government comes to our aid because the money given by government, even by the FA, after these various uh, chocks that we made, I mean, there's really nothing to write home about. So I think um, if we're allowed to have a full attendance now at the stadium, that will help us a lot. Uh, just, just, just before you go, because you mentioned it, you know, the the prize money for the Ghana Premier League. Um, some of the fans were not even happy with the medals that we're giving to you. Uh, I, I don't know if you have made any formal complaint, if you have, you have, you have side-chipped the FA to tell them that they have to step up in terms of um, medals and, and what they give to you after working so hard to win the Premier League and maybe for any Premier League champion. No, we as a club have not at all in any way complained or said anything. But the FA... As a leadership, FA has been there for years. I mean, years, over, over 60 years now, perhaps say so. And um, they have been progress all along, you know. They are there now, they see the best in the world being done. And I don't think there's a need for anyone to put pressure on them, you know, to to better, you know, their positions. And, uh, and also better the, the positions of the clubs, because uh, they sort of... Uh, class, you know, cops and whatnot, yeah, you know, it's, it's unacceptable now. It's unacceptable. Look at the sort of medal the boys have. I mean, it's unacceptable. So I believe strongly their own leadership should look into it and know that the world is changing. We are now, everybody is now well informed and uh, television is everywhere in the world. People are watching what happens, particularly in this Ghana since we are a football country. And they should improve these things. They have the money there, you know. So I don't see, I don't see where their problem is. This sort of third class cops and uh, badges or whatever they give to the boys, I think it's time they they, they put a stop to it and get us something up to world standards. Hey, that's a beautiful point that you've made. Um, Doc, can you give us an update on what's going on with uh, Pobiman, the projects that are ongoing at the moment? Can you just give us an update? The last time, you know, we had a, a very good discussion oh. on that. What's happening? Yeah, Bobby Manuela is moving smoothly. We are now on the, uh, what do you call it? The, the three natural pitches are going on. The one, uh, Asuta one will be coming on very soon. And then uh, <clears throat> the swimming pool itself is already under construction. Um, the fencing is going at the very fast rate. So the area has changed tremendously. What I'll do is that I'll try and go there during the course of the week and send you a picture. So you have an idea about what is happening. Yes. It will come out as a great, great, great place. Indeed, our, our, our plan is to change the face of football completely in Ghana, and uh, if not in West Africa, so that people will know that we are capable. We have always been pace setters, and I believe we are going to go into continue like that. Give us just about, we are going to have a completely new headquarters as well in Accra, a glass house of a four story, which we are going to do. Yeah. We are going to have a, a complete separate commercial house for, for the club. So you can see a lot has been done. And I can assure you that 
before the end of this year, you will see a lot of changes in our club. Good, good, good. Uh, so, Doc, uh, just a final one before I leave you. So, how many titles have you won now? Uh, if you add these ones to it as a board, board, board member, keyboard member, how, how many titles have you seen across Hearts of Oak win, man? I have, I've been with her since my infancy, and I, I can tell you that I can't count them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's um, Nyaho, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklu speaking with uh, George Adu Jr. about a crowd of folk and uh, the club's future and going to Africa. I know not too many people. Well, there's some who are not very excited about <laughs> it, but uh, yeah. It, we are patriotic, it, it, it Israel. Is, it is what it is. Israel, we are patriotic. It is what it is. And if it's hearts of folk that has to put us on the map, then hearts of folk it is. We will endure. Endure. Yes, we will endure. We, don't have to we will endure. Hearts of folk. Have to endure. Enjoy it. <laughs> Be happy for a crowd of folk. All right. For the next uh, conversation, as well, the classroom project. So, Star Ghana and uh, Joinees were seeking support to rehabilitate some dilapidated schools.